I'm Adnan Nawaz. A mammoth relief mission is swinging into action in northeastern Japan a day after it was struck by a devastating tsunami claiming hundreds of lives. The disaster was triggered by an 8.9 magnitude earthquake, the country's most powerful since records began. There is growing concern about two nuclear plants shaken by the quake and states of emergency have been declared at the two sites in Fukushima. People living nearby have been told to leave their homes. One of the worst hit areas was the port city of Sendai, where up to 300 bodies have so far been found. Let's go back to Washington, because David Russ is there. He's a regional executive from the United States Geological Survey. Thank you very much indeed for your time, David Russ. Just tell us about these plates that caused this earthquake, first of all. Do they often move so dramatically? They move dramatically, but this is certainly an exceptional earthquake, um, producing a magnitude 8.9 as it did, perhaps as much as 50 feet of motion in one event on one fault or perhaps some uh, uh, associated faults and certainly as I think I've heard it said today perhaps the fifth largest recorded earthquake in history so a large earthquake is not too uncommon but this is certainly extraordinary. What about the depth of it 24 kilometers is that deep shallow average? Well I would say it's, it might even be a little bit deeper I would say that this event having occurred on what we call a subduction zone where one of these plates of the earth's crust is diving down beneath another the Pacific plate going down beneath the Eurasian plate so it's, it's happening along an inclined surface and perhaps at 60, 70 kilometers depth an event of this sort is, is not unusual. We can get events uh, over 200 kilometers actually which produce damaging earthquakes as well. Can you tell us how much more energy there was in this earthquake say for example compared to the Haiti earthquake which was 7.0 because it's not quite that simple moving from 1.7.0 to 8.0. It's not quite so simple it's just one point is it? No, it certainly is not, and, and on the magnitude scale, there's about a 33 times increase for every one increment on that scale. So as you go from 7 to 8, that's 33 times, from 8 to 9, that's another 33. So this magnitude 8.9 event that we had today is almost 1,000 times greater than the earthquake uh, that you were referring to. So a very large event indeed. It seems a bit of a strange question, but is there any sort of early warning system for earthquakes? There's been a lot of effort put into try to forecast or predict earthquakes, and although we've had some success in identifying uh, various phenomena that might be used to forecast an event, for example, even this event that happened today had several foreshocks, as we now understand it. Uh, back on the 9th of uh, March, it was a 7.2. There were a couple 7.6s. It's hard to know that these were necessarily a forecast of a larger earthquake to come. We've had a lot of efforts to understand perhaps uh, changes in the magnetic field of the earth, changes in the release of gas, particularly radon gas, and although in some instances we found that yes there's been an indication of these phenomena before in, of a large damaging earthquake, it's not been systematic or consistent enough to use reliably as a forecasting indicator. And there was some hours after the main earthquake, a second one. Would you be surprised if there was even a third one? Well we would expect that there'll be large damaging earthquakes, what we call aftershocks, for not just many days and weeks, but for months and into the next year. Uh, as a rule of thumb, you might expect an event uh, up to within perhaps one magnitude below the main shock that could occur as an aftershock at some point in time. So it wouldn't be too surprising to have an event in the very high magnitude nine range uh, that could take place. And so these events, which are occurring in, as a smaller level right now in the dozens in the area, are not only uh, certainly frightening to the population, but they're certainly potentially damaging in their own right. Uh, an earthquake on the order of magnitude 5 can certainly produce damage. So when you get up magnitude 6 and 7 and larger in aftershocks, the damage uh, to already weakened structures can be okay, significant. Okay, David Russ, I'm sorry, we have run out of time. Thank you very much indeed for your time. This is BBC My News. Pleasure. Well, also on the line is the director of the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center in Hawaii. He is Dr. Charles McCreary. Dr. McCree, where is the tsunami at the moment? Well, right now the tsunami is uh, in the far uh, southeastern part of the Pacific uh, after making its journey uh, across most of the rest of the Pacific Ocean, but it's, 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 uh, right, it's impacting uh, the coast of South America. And is it impacting in any major way? Uh, it doesn't. Not in a not an extremely major way. It's uh, it's probably still going to be a hazard in 
in some places along the coast of South America, but we're probably looking at amplitudes uh, no greater than, uh, say, one or two meters above normal sea level. So apart from Japan, on its path, which countries have been worst affected? Well, uh, it's probably Ho Hawaii. Certainly, uh, we had uh, some impacts here. We had some uh, flooding of coastlines, and they're having some impacts on the west coast of the United States uh, that are uh, with some damage and some uh, minor flooding. Um, but, of course, the, the major impact that uh, eclipses everything else uh, that's happening uh, elsewhere in the Pacific is, is what's happened in Japan. All right, Dr. Charles McCreary, thank you very much indeed from the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center. Robert Hall reports on the worst earthquake in Japan's history. And it looks like the tsunami has engulfed several cities. Terrifying. Unstoppable. Live footage of Miyagi as the tsunami has struck the area. Obviously, Along miles of Japanese coastline, the sea is claiming the land. Cars. As of 7 p.m., the full extent of the damage is still not known. Ships. <laughs> Buildings seized by a wall of water which is sweeping away everything in its path. The tsunami raged through towns and villages. Now choked with debris and smashed homes. Seven on the Japanese seismic scale of zero to seven. That is the same size. Some of the buildings were on fire. No one yet knows the human cost of the tsunami's passing. Fires breaking out, as you can see, live coverage in the Sendai area, Miyagi Prefecture. Across farmland, tearing away crops, machinery, and livelihoods. A major earthquake hit Japan Friday afternoon, about an hour ago, hour and ten minutes ago and amongst the terminals of a regional airport. Japan's meteorological agency says the quake measured magnitude 8.4. It has revised it upwards to 8.4. Before turning, spent for the ocean once more. The earthquake had struck at 2.46 on a spring afternoon. Violent tremors shaking communities along 1,300 miles of Japan's eastern seaboard. This is central Sendai, the city closest to the epicenter. Outside the local TV station, disbelief has turned to a realization that the buildings and those around them are in danger. A country more prepared than most for the risk of earthquakes was facing one of the largest on record. In Tokyo, hundreds of miles from the epicenter, Japan's prime minister was addressing parliament when tremors shook the chamber. I offer my deepest sympathy to the people who have suffered the disaster. An emergency disaster response headquarters has been set up with myself as the head. By dusk, fires were still raging as a massive rescue effort widened across affected regions. Initial reports spoke of hundreds dead in Sendai alone, with hundreds more missing. Transport and power supplies are severely disrupted. Four nuclear power stations shut down automatically. One has reported a small radiation leak.
Hour by hour, extraordinary pictures have reached millions via Japan's TV networks and the internet. A ship trapped in a giant whirlpool as the retreating tsunami met the incoming tide. A householder desperately trying to alert rescuers. And travelers fleeing for their lives as the flood swept towards them. We're on the third floor, so we felt quite a big shake, and then everybody was evacuated. Um, and I work in the downtown area of the city, so most people were evacuated and just on the streets, and all the electricity and gas and water have been turned off. And in Sendai City, in, in, a tsunami reached 10 kilometers from the coast. Tsunami warnings have now been issued for the entire Pacific Basin, but so far damage elsewhere has been far less severe. A series of secondary shocks have kept Japan on high alert. The latest death toll is put at more than a thousand. This is expected to be a conservative estimate. One train is missing, another derailed. A ship carrying a hundred people has been swept away. Rescue teams from 45 countries are now on standby as Japan begins to assess the full effects of a catastrophe which will test its preparations and its national resolve to the limits. Robert Hall, BBC News. The waves surging across the Pacific led to a full alert. Dozens of countries feared they'd be devastated. But as each hour has passed and the tsunami has reached further, there have been no reports of damage beyond Japan so far and due to the tsunami there's been many people who went missing there have been lucky escapes this fishing vessel somehow survived the waves and there have been some very disturbing sights a giant whirlpool and a small boat caught inside it now the tsunami is still on its way to the shores of south america the authorities there are urging people to move inland or at least be aware of the risk but it's clear that japan has borne the brunt of this catastrophe and its impact is still unfolding. Well, that was David Shookman there um, giving his uh, background to what's gone on today. And to tsunami warnings have been in place across the Pacific since the earthquake in Japan. In the last few hours, the authorities in five Californian counties in the U.S. have ordered hundreds of people to evacuate. Joining us now with the latest on that from Los Angeles is Rajesh Merchandani. Rajesh, so um, what is happening? Still on alert? Absolutely, and the, the, the tsunami here is hitting parts of California and the west coast of America. In the Los Angeles Basin area where I am, we're on tsunami advisory, so they're not expecting strong flooding here on the coast here. Further north, I'd say from about 100 miles north of Los Angeles all the way up the western U.S. coast and beyond, they've had tsunami warnings for several hours. During the night in some places, sirens sounded to alert uh, home, uh, people in their homes to get to higher land. And um, we've seen some, some big waves in a place called Crescent City, which is in Northern California, perhaps the largest we've recorded in California so far, about eight foot uh, was one wave. Now they have experience of tsunamis in Crescent City. In 1964, after the Great Alaska earthquake, 11 people died in that city because of the tsunami. They're taking it very seriously. There have been evacuations there. Further up the coast, uh, in the Oregon, on the coast of Oregon, um, again, people were evacuated overnight and evacuation centers have been set up there. Waves coming in maybe three feet high, not massive. In Santa Cruz and around the sort of San Francisco Bay Area, we've seen wave heights between three and six feet. And the kind of damage we're seeing up and down the west coast of America at the moment is limited to um, boats being smashed about and bits of docks coming off, wooden docks coming loose and breaking off. Uh, so nothing really major here, but residents have been told that uh, the tsunami waves started arriving at a low tide time, which was beneficial for the coast, but we are heading into high tide time, and we're told that uh, we won't get a better idea and things won't really calm down in California for a couple of hours yet. All right, Rajesh Merchandani, thank you very much for the update on the situation in the United States. And apparently, if you look at the projections, the greatest force is heading diagonally south to uh, South America coast. So uh, that's what we're going to be looking at uh, next. But